A while back I made a YouTube video on my Heathkit ET3400 microprocessor trainer. This was a nice product for learning how to program the 6800 microprocessor and Heathkit sold many of them to schools and hobbyists. The main limitations of the ET3400 were the limited memory of 512 bytes and no way to permanently save and load programs. This was addressed by the ETA3400 Memory I.O. Accessory, an add-on to the ET3400 or ET3400A, which expanded the RAM to 4K, added a serial port and serial monitor program, and an interface for saving and loading programs using a cassette tape recorder. It also had enough space in its ROM to include a version of the tiny basic programming language. Offered in the 80s, the ETA3400 sold for US $175 and another $50 for an additional 3K of RAM. I've been looking for an ETA3400 expander on sources like eBay, but they're quite scarce and attract high prices when they show up, so I also considered building one myself. Recently I came across a project by Scott Baker who built a replica of the ETA3400 using slightly more modern components. He made his design freely available and even offered some blank PCBs on eBay. This was exactly what I was looking for. I purchased one of his PCBs, the second last one he had. Then I obtained all the parts needed, some of which I had on hand and some I had to order. The design is close to the original but with some changes and new features. It uses a more modern and obtainable static RAM chip to add 4K of memory. Address decoding is simplified by using a PLD, a programmable logic device. It has jumpers to control a number of features. You can optionally plug in a Raspberry Pi Zero to use as a built-in terminal, providing the serial interface, keyboard and video, and wireless networking. Alternatively, you can use an RS-232 serial interface to a computer or terminal, as on the original ET3400. Construction is pretty straightforward with all through-hole components, and Scott even provided digi-key part numbers for the critical parts. Due to the current semiconductor shortage, you may have to check multiple sources. The PLD chip used was out of stock at DigiKey, but Mouser had some, and the correct RAM and EEPROM can be tricky to find. You'll also need a way to program the EEPROM or EEPROM in the PLD. An Atmel ATF16V8B PLD chip is used for address decoding. Similar to a PAL, it needs to be programmed, but unlike a PAL, it can be reprogrammed multiple times. I didn't have a suitable programmer, so I purchased a TL8662 Plus from XGECU on eBay. This can program thousands of devices, including microcontrollers, so I thought it was something I could use again on other projects. I found it very easy to use to program the PLD using the supplied JEDEC file and the Windows application. I also found a Linux program called MiniPro that works well on Linux. Scott Baker even designed a 3D printed case that is similar to the original ETA3400 and allows the expander to be mounted under the trainer and provides access to all of the interfaces. My 3D printer is enabled to make parts that are this large, about 30 centimeters or one foot, so I didn't try building it. Like the original ETA3400, to use it you need to modify the ET3400 or ET3400A slightly, but it can still be used without the expander after the modifications. The changes are documented in the Heathkit manual and involve adding a diode and some jumper wires and changing the crystal and some caps so the unit runs at 2 MHz rather than 1. The diode needed is a rather unusual GD510 but can be substituted with a common 1N270. I had previously made some of the modifications to my unit shortly after I got it in preparation for hopefully getting the expander. Note that when you use the ETA3400, you need to remove the RAM chips from the sockets on the ET3400 as the memory on the expander replaces them. You can continue to use the trainer without the expander as long as you replace the memory. I assembled the board including the programmed EEPROM and PLD. Scott Baker noted that he had issues when using 55 nanosecond speed 62256 RAM chips and suggested using 70 nanosecond parts. The part I ordered from DigiKey was 55 nanosecond, as that was the only version they had in stock, and I saw the same issue with memory being erratic. I took a slower 6256 chip from another board I had on hand, and it worked reliably. Other than this RAM issue, which I was prepared for, 
The expander worked well right off the bat. I was able to use the serial monitor to enter and run programs and to save and load programs over the serial port. The tiny basic interpreter also worked well within its limitations. I tried using both a full serial interface as well as a TTL level FTDI USB to serial adapter to connect to a laptop computer. I didn't try the optional Raspberry Pi Zero interface yet, but I do have a Pi Zero I could use for this purpose. The cassette tape interface signals looked good on a scope, but I have not yet dug up a tape recorder to try it. With a computer attached to the serial interface, you can switch to the serial monitor program by executing from address 1400. which then shows a mon prompt. Overall, the terminal interface is more convenient to use than the front panel display. Some notable features of the serial monitor are displaying and changing memory, displaying and changing CPU registers, running a program with support for breakpoints and single stepping, saving and loading programs using cassette tape or over the serial interface as Motorola hex files. Here's an example of loading a program sent from the attached computer as a Motorola hex file. You can dump the program as hex bytes. and you can run it, in this case from address 0100. The sample program included in the ETA3400 manual toggles all of the LED segments on the front panel display and then returns to the monitor. You can also enter Tiny Basic by executing from address 1C00. This is a version of Tom Pittman's Tiny Basic for the 6800, which was extended to support loading and saving programs over the cassette interface. Here's a simple program which prints out some numbers and their squares and cubes. It's quite a limited basic with only integer variables and math functions and a limited set of commands, but gives the user an example of a higher level programming language. It's quite impressive given that it's only two kilobytes in size. The buy command in BASIC will return to the serial monitor. This was a fun project. Thanks go to Scott Baker for his design and detailed documentation. If you own an ET3400 or ET3400A, building this expander will make your unit even more useful and convenient to use. Using the hardware and software files provided by Scott Baker, it's easy to reproduce his design.